how, how the ant hole, I guess, is all comes together to the idea of accepting death but not, ha of not having it so much that you want to kill yourself and release yourself from life. It, how the role of the evoker of putting the gun to the head to awaken what they call these personas. Okay, so, so, okay, so this is uh, the place of death in consciousness is sort of interesting. Uh, because uh, Freud says that when you're young, you don't really believe in your own death. Um, and, and unless when you're young, you've encountered death, I think that's probably true. This is why uh, it's mostly young men who will engage in very risky behavior, driving crazy fast, driving drunk, you know, hanging from rooftops, daring each other to do all sorts of stuff because you don't really believe in your own death. When you do, if you've ever experienced someone else's death, whether in your family, a close friend, like a, maybe a, a almost fatal car accident, you're all of a sudden confronted with the reality that life really does mean death. If anyone's read the Epic of Gilgamesh. Exactly. Right, you'll understand what it's about. Epic of Gilgamesh is about two powerful heroes and best friends. Nothing can beat them. They kill monsters. They build mighty walls to protect the city. Everything's great until one of them dies because of the action of the gods. And then Gilgamesh, who's this great king, all of a sudden life turns meaningless. Like nothing is any worth anything to him anymore since his friend Enkidu has died. So he has to go on a quest to the end of the earth uh, to find... Uh, the realm of the gods and say, why can we humans have eternal life? I can't stand having to die. Well, in the end, he discovers, nope, you do have to die, but life is still meaningful in the time we have here. Look at the wall, he says at the end of the text. Look at this great city I've built. It's got everything it needs for the people. And the sense is, even if Gil Gilgamesh dies, like the city will live on and it will have had purpose. So it's a way of finding meaning in life w without having to be God, because you can't. God means being deathless. That's, that's in all traditions. The gods and deathlessness go together. Humans and mortality go together. So I guess then what is, do you think we should get to the spiritual problem before we try to fully answer the question of, of, of Jung's response? To, let's, let's get to the spiritual problem. I, I think problem. the spiritual problem will help us understand Jung's answer exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So the fact that all this started because of a science experiment to kill everyone, but in the good way, not the evil, the maniacal way. So tell me. So why which, which so science experiment are you talking about in in persona? In persona, yes. Okay. Per, yes, Mitsuro's Mitsuro's um, grandfather, who worked and discovered these shadows and just it's Aha, you know, okay. discovered the shadows and and create and. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I, tell just, but science is mm, bad with you. Mm, mm, it's not just bad. Okay. This is perfect. <laughs> this is the segue. So, when if you study a little history, you know that when human beings in the early scientific period, 17th and 18th century, first realized that we can plot the laws of physics mathematically, and mm -hmm. right? this is Galileo and Newton, then we can do all sorts of stuff. Eventually, we could send a rocket to the moon. Um, we could mass produce enormous amounts of stuff. We can whip up a COVID vaccine in a year. Like, but when this originally started in the 18th and 19th century, and you got automation and factories and so on, the human race, and this is a period called the Enlightenment in, in Europe, was exceedingly optimistic. Now that we've discovered science, we can fix everything. There should be a science of society that we can make a happy society where everyone will be satisfied. There was all this optimism, wild optimism about the discovery of science. That broke down after World War I, which was the most technological and the most devastating war to date. And all of a sudden, human beings will look at themselves and saying, oh my, all our science notwithstanding, we're still like moral idiots. What's the problem here? And Jung had a dream about World War I, correct? Yes, he did. He did. He saw it was coming before it came. The River of Blood, correct? Yes. So Jung realized that the spiritual problem of modern man is that he argued this was a particularly primarily Western problem at the time, was that Western, let's say, Euro-American human beings, because we developed technological science, put too many eggs in the rationality basket. 
we began to imagine we were purely rational creatures and through rational means we could control the world and make a perfect life for human beings. World War I just blew a hole in that. World War II blew an even bigger hole in it. And all of a sudden, we wind up in the mid-20th century uh, and human be beings are beginning to feel very pessimistic. Right? The atomic bomb. You know, it was tried out on Japan to devastating consequences. Developed further, uh, you know, total nuclear arsenals. I, I grew up in an age where there were it's in kindergarten, first grade, and we practiced, like, you know, getting down un under our desk as if that would protect us if there were a nuclear attack and whatnot. So the, the spiritual problem of modern man was that rationality and controlling science is not solving our problems. And Jung thinks that because of all our emphasis on rationality, we got cut off from these irrational and more animal instinctual forces within. Whereas for Jung, it's the relationship between instinctuality and rationality that makes human life able to handle problems. And I think that relates to, so when I showed you Takaya, so who is the leader of the Strega, and sort of put up as the leader of this cult that forms uh, the, the cult of Nyx towards the end of the game, um, that, that somehow starts popping up in these newspapers for some reason, that he tell, basically says, life lost its meaning long ago. And so why do, why do we have to live every day to sa savor it when we can all just die? So how, how do you respond to that? Right, that's, that's despair. In other words, despair is when you've given up hope that life itself, maybe even a surprising way, will provide you more meaning. I would just say the model is if you've broken up from a love relationship and are very disappointed, you think it's all over, you'll never meet another person again, yeah, you're going to feel real bad for a few months, maybe a few weeks, a few months, but you will recover and you'll pop back. Like uh, Human beings go through cycles of you know, mental sort of dryness, but that's almost like something you might need to be in before you get to the other side. But you have to recover hope that there is something beyond what your conscious mind can entertain. And it might even take sort of elements of faith, that is to say things you're not sure of, but to feel, you know what, I'm going to keep on going down this path of life. Right? If, if I die, it's all over. So would you say, in, in a sense, with, with them being told, with the, the, the main characters, the party being told that there's no way to stop Nyx in any way, and, and yet they keep on going after they find in their, 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 their wills to, to, fight on, to, to keep on fighting, would you say that's just an allegory for life in general? Yes, I would, because if Nyx means death, yes, we will all get there sometime. We don't know when, we don't know how. The real issue is, how do you live in that in-between? When I was in college, existentialism was very big. And, and I mean the philosophy of Heidegger or Sartre that took death to be like a very basic f feature of human life. In fact, Heidegger said that all of life was what he called being toward death. Right? That it's out there in front of us, but we can't let it paralyze us. Whereas if you think that death deprives life of meaning, then uh, you're kind of missing the point. It is precisely death that gives life meaning because if you lived forever, it wouldn't really matter what you did in each particular day. If your life is finite, then it does matter what you do. So then it, I guess that, that basically validates it, what, with this idea that wanting to kill yourself is not truly wanting to die because, because when you are preparing, when you, when you die, you are fulfilling towards death, as you would say. Yeah, I, I think I think it's I think it's really that death suicide is wanting out from pain. It's wanting out from pain, and if the only way to get out from pain is out for life, getting out of life, then you'll go for that. But what the suicidal person needs to understand is that there are options, even if you can't see them. All right, so it sounds like in, in Persona Five, or is, is it Five? You got this character saying, "Just, just give it three, up." Three, three, three. Just, just give it up. Just go ahead and die now. There's no point. You know, that's the, you know, the old-fashioned Christianity would say that's the devil. 
uh, the psychoanalytic model would say that is a destructive voice from the mind and it is not you and you are not it and you have to kick back against it. Just in the same way as if you heard a crazy voice in your head saying, you know, jump out the window, you would kick back against that or a crazy voice in your head saying, go out and kill so-and-so. You'd be like, no. Right, because you are not the voices in your head. They are part of you. You are engaged in relationship with them, but you have to hold your own position. And your position is one of life that is enduring, that can take some pain and suffering and yet come out on the other side. If, if we just think about what people go through, wars or are refugees or horrifying plane accidents where to live, you have to you cannibalize the bodies of the dead people, and yet you do because you want to live. The will to live is powerful, strong, but it is possible to get disconnected from it. And do you think there's any significance that Zakaya's persona is hypnos? Well, hypnos is, means sleep in Greek, and in sleep, we are given a break from pain. Exactly. And it is also the moment where life forces can come up in the mind. And you'll be in a dream having having some great sexual affair. And you'll wake up, you'll be, oh, dag, I wish that were true. Well, guess what? Time to go out and make it true.